Steel Cousins, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and we are back at it again with another video and this video is dedicated to John Boat Wiring. Everything electrical within your aluminum rigs, I'm gonna cover if you're a DIY or a beginner and you have questions, I have answers. I'm gonna go so far as to actually drawing out an electrical diagram. We're gonna dive into all the parts I use within my builds and the tools required to do the install, as well as going live in full effect into a step-by-step -step install within a customer's project. Hopefully I can answer all your questions within this video. I'm gonna show you how to go from Joe Blow to wiring like a pro, so stick around. There is a lot of information in this video, so I did an outline showing what takes place at what minute mark. If you are looking for something specific, the outline is listed in the video description. All right, guys, this is the project. I have dubbed the battleship. This thing is a monster. A lot going on in this boat, guys. But this is the perfect platform for me to do a wiring video. It's been a minute since I did a wiring video on the channel. I want to keep this video stupid simple for you for the DIY guy that doesn't know anything about wiring a boat. Or if you just have some questions on, on how I do my setups, this is the video for you. And as you can see, we're out back behind the shop in the Brigade Boat Satellite location. This is my Harbor Freight tent set up because this thing is a monster and it does not fit in the garage. So what I want to do, guys, is we're going to go back in the shop. I'm going to do a detailed drawing, a diagram to give you a visual aid of exactly how the system in these boats works, how I do the wiring. Once you have that visual aid, I'm going to walk you through a lot of the parts that go in this boat as far as like lights and kill switches and switches, a lot of the connectors and wire that I use in a project like this. I'm gonna show you that in the shop and then we're gonna come back out here. I'm gonna show you everything that's in this boat, rough wire to kind of give you an idea of layout. And then I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step on how I wire in the switches, the fuse box, the kill switch and get everything in operation. So stick around. Guys, we are on the road to 50K, so if you want to help us out, join the channel. If you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Let's dive right in, guys. Let's do a diagram of how I wire up these boats. Just a, a visual aid for you to avoid all confusion. This is how I'm going to do this boat that's sitting outside. All right, we're going to start with a battery. Now, in this boat, he is going to have an accessory battery. So this battery is going to be dedicated to the bilge pump, the live well, and all the lights throughout the boat. Accessory battery. You're going to have a positive and a negative. Positive is going to come off. Negative is going to come off. Positive, I usually run 8 gauge. Negative, 8 gauge. Positive is going to transfer through a battery kill switch. This is your line of defense to make sure nothing's drawing power to prevent power from going any further down the line in case of an emergency, a fire, or if you just want to be safe when the, bat, the boat is sitting and you're not using it and you just want to kill power. This is always a good safety precaution. This is going to continue through. So through the kill switch on your positive, and then everything is going to run through a fuse box. Now the ones I use have negative bus terminals built into the bottom of the fuse box. The so top half is going to be your fusible positive location. Bottom half is a negative terminal. So your negative goes in, your positive goes in. All right, so you guys follow what's going on here. For your battery, it goes through the kill switch, and then it, you're powering the fuse box. Same thing here, negative's going through. So now all your accessories can wire into this fuse box. Now on your positive side, you're gonna have, and I typically run jumpers that are 14 gauge. It's gonna come off, and then it's going to go into a switch and I'll normally run like eight of these an eight gang switch panel is what I'm going to show you today and then you're going to have an accessory this could be a bilge pump this could be a light whatever doesn't matter positive side negative side so say it's an LED light strip it's got a positive and a negative positive on the accessory is going to feed in to the back of this switch and I'm going to show you later in the video exactly how I wire the switches and then the negative is just going to come down and tie in to the negative bus terminal. There is going to be a negative on the back of the switch, which makes it the third wire coming out of the back of the switch. And that's also going to go to the negative bus terminal. But normally when I'm running six or eight switches, I'll jump all the negatives on the back. Again, I'll show you that in a minute. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Very simple, guys. Let's say this is like a bilge pump. Put a five amp or six amp fuse here that's it that's how i do it 
Now, on your accessory, you're going to times that by like 20 because this boat has like 20 lights. And a lot of times, depending on the locations, I'll jump them all together. Uh, so maybe all the hatch lights run off one switch. In this boat, there's four deck lights. Maybe they run off a switch. At this time, I'm actually going to walk you through what I'm cramming in this boat, starting from the battery over. And if there's anything left unanswered, I'm hoping we'll get through it as we go through the video, do the walkthrough, and then do the step-by-step -step installation. My customer did not provide me a battery for this boat. He is going to install the battery after pickup. I've done lithiums. I've done lead acid. It doesn't necessarily matter. I'm not going to get into all the dynamics of the battery, but let's just assume he's going to run a 12 volt. It could be a lead acid or a lithium. From, the, from there over, we're going to be running 8 gauge. And this is Anchor Marine. It's tin copper. If you don't know the difference between marine grade with tin copper, it just means that it's coated inside so it will not corrode if moisture gets inside of this. And of course, it's just rated for marine use. There is a big difference between tin copper and just regular primary wire. But this is what's going to go in. And this is going to go over, go through the kill switch and into the fuse box. Let's cover those. Battery shutoff switch or kill switch. This is the one I'm using in this particular project. I've used these. I've used different ones I've purchased on Amazon. I'm going to leave the links to all these products down in the video description. You can check it out, buy it if you want. If not, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to show you what I use in these projects and leave it linked down below for those who are interested. This is straightforward, guys. 8 gauge goes in, 8 gauge comes out. So literally, the wire goes through, connects to the terminal, comes out the other side, and on and off on you've got power off and moving on to the fuse box this is the one we're going to use in this boat you can get this one on amazon too you can get this on tinyboatnation.net doesn't matter this is the name brand and and pretty much the the standard on the market as you can see quick release cover you got your negative bus terminal up top negative eight gauge goes in positive eight gauge goes in provides power negative from your accessories go in positive from your switch leads come in with your fuse and you're just going to fuse accordingly to whatever the accessory is and, and whatever the recommendation is if it's a bilge pump they are going to typically have a recommendation or a live oil pump or if it's lights then you're just going to have to figure out the draw on how many lights are running off that switch fuse it accordingly this is where we're at past the fuse box to the leads coming out of the switches or uh, even on the accessories, because they only give you so much wire and accessory, and then you got to get through the boat to the switch panel or the fuse box. So we're going to need wire. Anchor Marine 14-2, AWG 14-2 is duplex. So you can see two and one, yellow negative, red positive. <clears throat> and it's, of course, it's in this housing, which helps protect it even more. Good stuff, guys. This is the best stuff. But again, links down below. If I need to run like a jumper, like I mentioned, coming off the switch and in the fuse box, if I need a single... A lot of times I've scrapped stuff. Here's an example of that. Just 14 gauge. You could cut it and actually remove the wire out of that housing and, and get you a single strand if needed. And to go along with wiring, obviously you're going to need a way to make connections. And to do that, I like to use these heat shrink crimp connectors. You can see they have a variety of sizes depending on your, your gauge of wire. It's the bigger boys. And then they even have ring terminal connectors. And I use these specifically on the fuse box location. And to make those work, you're going to need a crimp connector tool. And they make this super easy for you. As you can see, red, blue, yellow. So just accordingly, depending on what size you're using, you just put it over the crimp connector. Squeeze. That's all she wrote. Now for stripping wire, I've used these. They work pretty good. If that's your flavor, also go old school. I like to use these a lot. Old habits die hard. And as far as terminals, I just pick these up. I get a variety and I just use what I need because all batteries are a little bit different in sizing depending on what a customer provides me with. And uh, these seem to work pretty good. And that's about it for the wiring. Now we could talk about some accessories. I'd like to cover this. This is a voltmeter USB port. I really like these for a couple reasons. Number one, this doesn't have to operate on a, on a switch. So when I put it in this boat, it'll go on the switch panel, but it won't have a dedicated switch because it has a built-in switch. So this will turn it on. It'll give my customer his readout on his voltage on his accessory battery. He'll also have a way to charge his cell phone in his cockpit. Super cool little USB port voltmeter.
we'll get into some lighting. Now, as you can see, I use a variety of lights. So I'm going to cover some of the ones going in this build and why I use them. We'll start with light strips. As you can see, I've got a two foot version and a one foot version. These are both made by the same manufacturer. I buy them from the same manufacturer on Amazon for a specific reason. They're not like crazy expensive, but they're also not like really cheap. And I like these because of the construction. When you look at them, they've got nice thick rubber housing. The LEDs are good. They're well protected. Now, I wouldn't go dunking these underwater, but like for inside of hatches or even for deck lighting, they seem to hold up and work really well. In the lighting world, there's good, better, and best. I would classify these as better. I'll show you best inside of the boat here in a minute. The biggest thing that I look for when I'm buying any kind of lights is whatever the backing is. And on these, they're, they're 3M, which means that they, they grab and hold really well. It's not some generic backing. And I could attest that these are great. Clean with alcohol, stick these inside of a hatch, and they work great. I've also been using these little spot LEDs. These are super convenient and easy to install. As you can see, there's like a single LED in there. It's got like a nice gasket and seal. You just drill you a hole and pop them in. And you can even see it's sealed on the inside. Drill a hole, pop them in. I use a step bit. I saw uh, Ryan at Fire Ant Fishing was actually using these in some boats, and they look really cool. So I've used these and uh, I like them. It just depends on the location and where you, where you have clearance for, but uh, just another lighting alternative to use in your John boat. The last variation that I use are these lights. Now I'm not using these in the build I'm gonna show you, but I've used these in the past. And I typically use these if I need to mount over hydro turf. In the last build I did, I had to mount a light like this over hydro turf within the cockpit. So you turf everything. You pre-wire your lead, it pops out, and then you tab in, and then you can mount these lights in. And I do so because they have screw holes. So these are good if, if you just want to screw a light in someplace. These work fine as well. They're, they're all LEDs. They've got different colors, uh, different strokes for different folks. So there's just different varieties depending on where you need a light and, and how you can mount it and, and how you want to go about it, guys. But that's why I use a variety of them. Moving on to the switch panel been using this same panel in my most recent builds and we'll be using it in this build now we've got green eight gang switches nothing extravagant there a switch is a switch and if you get online they're all very similar i have not had any issues with this one so i've been sticking with it the panel itself is really nice quality i'm not sure if you could see that but this is actually aluminum that's been powder coated and i find that nice now, I'm known for my switch panels, so what I do is I get these switches in a panel and I insert them into a overall panel that I'm going to fabricate. And again, we'll get into that later in the video and you'll see kind of how I do what I do. As far as the back, you'll see that they're five pin. You've got all your negative jumpers. I will use that. I'll tie into this and run it to the negative bus on the fuse box. As far as all the positives, again, later in the video, I'll show you step by step how I do it, but I'll pull all these. And I'll actually wire my accessory in with a jumper running the fuse box. But we'll get into that later in the video. Tiny Boat Nation is actually creating their own switch panels that are going to have the same type of switches. I think they're doing a six gang, but they're doing custom panels with different colors, um, different patterns. It's a sexier, more trendy looking switch panel. And then they've even got them with the voltmeters and USBs built in. I'll use those in the future. I don't have my hands on one of those, but that product will be released at any time. And when it does, of course, I will let you guys know. And of course, there's always that miscellaneous stuff I may need. Heat shrink wrap in different sizes, small zip ties, large zip ties. Use these a lot. Nylon clamp connectors. Use these for hanging wire from framing, keeping that elevated in the framework of the boat. And of course, that heat gun for the crimp connectors with the heat shrink. Use this all the time. I did not have these at the time I filmed this video, but I did receive some of Tiny Boat Nation's electrical parts line as I was editing this video. Figured it was worth a mention. They are available on the website as well as a boat wiring kit, which I think is pretty cool. Again, the links are in the video description. All right, guys, we're back outside at the boat. Want to show you a few of the electronics that I installed in this boat and kind of give you a walk through some of the wiring and kind of what got us to this point. We'll start by, I want to show you the, the lights because these lights are already installed. You'll see that there's an LED light strip there, the LED light strip there, it's an LED light strip here, and then an LED light strip here. And this is all the deck lighting. Let's take a look at those. The deck lights are made by flashlights and these are really high-end performance LEDs, guys. I've used them in the past. I actually did a step-by-step -step installation video on these on another boat. Leave that linked up above. 
So if you want to check that out, well, let me kind of show you how these are installed and, and why they're different from the LED strips that I already showed you. For one, you've got to silicone them on. Okay, so these are actually silicone on with a hardcore silicone. You can see the little flashlight logo in there. And these are solid, guys. These are solid. There is no air in there. No way for water to penetrate. They are 100% waterproof and submergible. And they make different colors. They make an RGB. You see the wire feeds down. I give a little valet loop. Goes around. I'll use them cable clamps to, to hang. Zip ties. We got wiring coming through and then you've got the other LED light and the wiring going down and that's kind of where they go to. And then we're going to go two into one and you see how I do that. Two going in, one coming out and then that's that 14 gauge duplex in red and black and that just routes around and then it goes over to the area where the switch panel is going to be. Over here, same deal guys. Light goes down. Light goes down, you can see right there, two into one, left side, right side, and then two into one again, and then you end up with one lead. The four deck lights running on one switch, and as long as you're not running like a ton of crazy stuff, 14 gauge is plenty. And then up front on this boat, I'm using Osnium, LED, shark eye, nav lights. These things are freaking awesome and they are super tiny. Look how small they are compared to my finger. LEDs, you can see right there, US Coast Guard, two mile visibility approved, legal beagle. These are actually aluminum guys that have been powder coated. So they are not plastic, very high quality. They're not cheap either. I think they're like 80 bucks, but they're super small, low profile, really cool. On this project, I had to kind of cut into the deck to get in there because there's foam, get them wired up both sides routes around same deal here two into one and then it feeds to the back and since i just showed you the front nav this is the rear stern light i'm going to be using i actually get these at academy sports it's like the only thing i literally drive to a store and buy because i i just hadn't found the greatest ones on amazon so i get these as you can see it's a uh, adjustable uh height telescopic and it comes with the mount this is going to go in and it'll actually get mounted after decking and turf but I do have the lead ran to the back. And then what happens is that lead comes in and then the lead from the nav lights come in and those two leads for this light and those lights will wire onto one switch. And now for something super sexy is this is a rod locker. This boat actually has two rod lockers. They're identical and they've got the LED light strips that I showed you inside the shop. Would you look at that? And the LED light strips, this is what I like about them guys. You see it, it's hidden up under there right up underneath the track and then you could just turf right up to them and they actually shine out and light up this whole um rod box man i've got a two footer in here it works out perfectly again totally hidden and that's what i like about them when i'm doing these aluminum builds is they stick right to the raw aluminum and i could just turf right up to them and they remain hidden and super clean this is a tackle storage box and i've got the same deal in here there it is just up underneath the track and again those are the two footers and then in this hatch i've got the same style of light but just the one foot version there you can see it up under there same deal and again i like those stick on lights and applications like this because i've got a hatch i've got a hatch i've got a hatch and i want them to be able to mount in certain spots without having to drill through a screw or a rivet and then, and then get into the other hatch. And these are already aluminum side panels, so they stick really, really well. Your money is really in the backing. And so that's why I go with the ones with 3M backing. And just a note, this boat will get those small spotlight LEDs I showed you. Um, it's gonna get them in the cockpit, but we're gonna have to get all the turf in before those get mounted. But I already have the leads pre-ran because sometimes before you do foam board insulation or, or cockpit walls, you've got to have your leads ran because this is actually a cooler. If you can see this is a cooler and I, there's no way to get wiring back through here because all of this had to be um, pour foamed. So uh, a lot of times guys in the wiring process, you may need to think ahead and pre-run leads. And lastly, the pumps I use, 
I've been using the Flowrite Premium Kit for all my live well stuff. It's available on Tiny Boat Nation. They sell all the Flowrite stuff. But the pump that comes with the Flowrite Kit is going to be this rule pump. You can see that. And I just wire it around. Again, a little OCD on the wiring. Try to tuck everything up nice and neat. And then get it through and around to where it needs to go. That's super easy. You're just tying into a negative and a positive and just routing it around with 14 gauge. Same deal here. Now, I use this bilge pump specifically. I picked this up on Amazon because it's it's removable from that from this from this base. And I like this one because what I do is I epoxy, use a little bit of epoxy on the bottom, glue it down, and then screw it in. And it's not ever going anywhere. And you can still access it and unclip it and pop it out. No big deal. But I get this one specifically because I've done enough of them and seen enough guys with bilge pumps just rattling around. And if it's rattling around in the back of your boat, it's not doing any good. Now, I am wiring these manually, so it's a manual bilge. But with this L bracket to where you could actually tie it into something, I feel like that's a big benefit. Well, guys, I think that's about it as far as catching you up to speed. Sorry if I put you to sleep. Now I'm going to get to putting the decking back in this boat off camera, get her decked. And then I'm going to show you step by step how I do the final wiring. All right, guys, off camera, I fabricated this switch panel. As you can see, it mounts the 8 gang switch, the Flowrite equipment, voltmeter, USB port, and then the battery kill switch. And all I do on all these guys is just take a lot of measurements, cut out my panel out of sheet aluminum, and then very, very carefully measure all the equipment that needs to go into it, lay it out nice and evenly. That's, that's really all she wrote. We're gonna go ahead and get to wiring. When we get in the boat, I'm gonna show you how to wire from the battery to the kill switch. I'm not gonna get into the flow ride equipment, and I'm not gonna cover every single one, but I'm gonna just give you the basic overview of how to wire in an accessory kill switch, and then show the fuse box getting mounted and how to connect everything there. I want to show you one thing I always do to these eight gang switch panels. On the back side, they have all of these red jumpers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that and we're going to wire it a different way. Um, let me show you kind of what these do and why I don't like them and why I remove them. I've got the positive and negative plugged into one of my M12 batteries just to get power from the switches. And as you can see, that bottom light is lit up with that jumper fed into the positive side. And then when you actually turn the switch on, the upper light lights up. I don't like this because if you wire it in the way that they have it set up, these always stay lit. And then you always have to turn your kill switch off to uh, cut off power. And I, so I, I typically just remove those from the back side. This light will no longer work and that's fine. How I like it to be is for the upper light to come on when it has power and for it to be completely dark when no power is running to the accessory. To get these jumpers off, you don't want to go in here and just start yanking on them. They won't pull directly out. You will actually end up pulling the pin out of the back side of the switch and breaking it all together. Ask me how I know. So if you want to remove these jumpers, this is the way you got to do it. You're going to go in here, and I'm going to take my wire strippers, and I'm just going to very, very gently find the release, there's a little pin, pull up. Just one at a time, gently remove. If you yank on them, you will break the switch and then you'll say the cheap Amazon switches, they suck and that's not the case at all. You just gotta find that pin and gently release them. And quick note guys, if you get super aggressive and you actually do end up pulling one of these pins out of the back side of the switch, they can be salvaged. You could still get that pin as long as it's one solid piece and snap it back into the switch. They can be repaired. I have done it before as long as you don't break them in half and break them off. Getting this party started, starting to actually wire things. And this is the part of the build that I love because it means that we're at the very end of it and I get to see all the goodies work within the boat. And then it also means I'm about to get paid. So went ahead and took about five foot of my eight gauge. And I just split it down the middle, gave myself a positive lead and uh, put my first ring terminal connector on. As you can see, nice and tight. That's gonna go in to the input side. If you can see that input, output. Input side on the battery shutoff. All right, so this is gonna attach to the positive terminal on the battery, feed in to the input. And then I'm gonna make another lead that comes back out and goes 
to the positive side on the fuse box. Let me show you now how I do a ring terminal connector. This is very simple. I take this, we're gonna cut around the edge, strip it, and then put a connector on with a little bit of heat shrink wrap. I'm gonna do it in time lapse. Got that first cable done. Went ahead and make my second one. This is coming out of the output and gonna go to the fuse box, the positive side. Only difference here is you'll see the different terminal sizes, just paying attention to what size you need. This is the size I need for the fuse box. Again, I get this variety of terminal connectors. I'm using the wire strippers, and then I'm actually using this old school crimp just to crimp the terminals over the wire. And of course, using heat shrink tubing, over the connections we are in the boat got the switch panel laying in the floor of the cockpit got a temporary battery back here the customer is probably going to go with the lithiums but i've got this battery installed just for mock-up purposes went ahead and mounted the fuse box right there on this back wall inside this back compartment so he's going to have easy access to it and it's nice and tucked away had already pre-drilled this hole added the rubber around and that feeds into this chamber where the switch panel is going to mount and all my wiring's coming out quick recap positive comes off the battery feeds through hits this side of the battery shutoff goes back around and then ties in to the positive there at the bottom of the fuse box negative comes off the negative side of the fuse box and just ties around to the battery on the negative at this point we're actually ready to wire something to a switch absolute first thing i need to do is go ahead and take this negative and go ahead and ground that so i'm gonna tab into this with a connector 14 gauge and then just route it around underneath and then put it on the negative terminal on the fuse box 14 gauge wire here you can use the traditional wire strippers strip the wire or if you want to get bougie with it you can take these fancy little guys here wire strippers use those we're going to go over making a butt connection we're going to tie this into this wire i just stripped to run it to the negative bus bar on the fuse box so we're going to need these heat shrink wire butt connector 1614 they're blue take the wire put your connector over the wire Take our crimp tool, see the blue dot, number two, blue on the blue connector. So you hear it click, boom, shakalaka, that's all there is to it. Now, of course, I've got to connect this to the other side. And then we could heat it up and shrink it with a heat gun. Now that we got that connected, we're going to go over doing a terminal connector which is really the exact same concept. I'm using same deal here, 14, 16 gauge blues, but you'll see that they've got the proper size and number 10 terminal connector. And these are what I use on all the fuse boxes I do. Put it over, blue dot, number two, crimp, now heat. And that is basically what you want it to look like. The heat shrink connectors actually are two birds with one stone as you get your connector and you get your heat shrink seal that's waterproof on top i'm very mindful when i'm using this heat gun of which direction i'm pointing it especially in a boat like this as you can see i've already got the custom c deck installed in the floor and then this upper wall here because i had to get that first before i could do the wiring and insert the panel this thing if I shoot it the wrong direction, I can end up melting that sea deck or carpet or hydro turf, and that would be a very bad day. All right, got the negatives from the switches right there at the top into that bus bar. Now we're going to get started, and I'm going to show you how to wire in an accessory. This is the bilge wiring. As you can see, the duplex 14 gauge, two and one. Going to go ahead and cut this back, strip it, and get my negative and positive separated. It's got that stripped back, got the two leads coming out. On the negative side, I went ahead and put that ring terminal connector on. This is going to go to the negative bus on the fuse box. Positive side, went ahead and stripped it. And what I'm going to use here are just some uh, connectors so I could plug it into the back of the switch. Now, they also make these in the heat shrink application like everything else. I just don't have any. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this heat shrink, cut me a little piece. You need to put this on first. Then put your connector on and do the same deal here. Then we're going to run this back over and then heat shrink it. All right, so I've got that negative right there on the negative bus, and that's for the bilge pump. All right, the positive is going to plug into the back of the switch. I also had to make a jumper that's going to come out of the other switch prong and then go back and then hit uh, one of these with a fuse. So off camera, I made this jumper. As you can see, it's got the terminal connector, the fuse side, and it's got the connector for the pin on the other side. It's right here, this, this wire right here with this orange five amp fuse, that is the bilge pump. Okay, so you have to envision power is coming in this eight gauge wire directly from the battery and giving this fuse box power. Now this is your circuit, this five amp, all right, is your circuit breaker. And then now it's feeding power through this 14 gauge wire, which is my jumper. And I plug that jumper in right here to the middle pin. Okay, and then the accessory, which is the bilge pump, the positive on the bilge pump goes to this bottom pin. Okay, and then the negative from the bilge pump actually goes right here to the negative bus terminal. All right, and that completes the circuit. And now you can hear the bilge is operating. And then like I said, when you turn it on, that light illuminates. Turn it off, nothing. Turn it on, light illuminates, let you know you've got power. Again, the jumper goes to the middle pin. This wire feeds to the fuse side. This wire is coming directly from the bilge pump to the bottom left pin. And then the negative from the bilge pump goes to the negative bus. And then the negatives on the switches are all jumped together. And then that goes where the yellow wire is to the negative bus. And that is how you wire an accessory. I'm going to do the same thing for everything inside of the boat beyond maybe uh, some of the lights where I'm going to go two into one. And I'm going to get to that and show you a two to one connection. I forgot to mention, guys, I actually wire up the uh, USB voltmeter first, typically in my projects, just to make sure that I have power. You can see this battery needs to be charged, but we got 12.7 on the volts. You got your ground, you got your hot. Your hot goes in, same concept here. It goes in, I've got it on a 10 amp fuse. And then the, the negative is just coming out and then that's just going to the negative bus bar. I like this specific uh, USB voltmeter because the switch is actually built into the unit. So there's no secondary switch. So power's off, power's on, all gravy, baby. We are going to do a two to one connection. As you can see, I've got two duplex leads coming in. And this one goes to the rear pole light. These go to the front nav light. So we want the rear pole light and the front nav lights to turn on at the same time when we turn on a switch. We cannot fit a 14 gauge connector over these. It will not go inside, it's not gonna work. So what I like to do is strip the wires. I go a little bit longer than I normally do. And then we're gonna go with the next size down. So we're gonna go with 10 to 12 gauge. Just try to kind of squeeze them together. And then what I'm gonna do is take this connector and go over it and then just kind of turn it. All right, and get it nice and tight in there. And again, this is yellow, so we're gonna go the yellow dot. And that's nice and tight. Now on the other side, what I'm gonna do is we are going to splice off a lot see how long that is and then all I'm gonna do here this is 14 gauge I'm just gonna fold it over and basically that just doubles it up and gives me more meat to stick in that 10 to 12 gauge connector if I could get it in here if I could get it in the hole all I've got to do is use the heat gun to heat shrink all this and that's a two to one connection. There they are, two into one connections. And you can see that heat shrink connector really does its job 
how it conforms to those wires and that connector and just really holds everything and locks everything and seals it. There's another two into one there. Guys, I'm going to get back to wiring. I'm going to complete this wiring job. I'll show you kind of how it looks like when I get done with it. All right, guys, everything is wired up, 100% wired. I'm going to try to neatly organize this. I'm going to go ahead and install the switch panel back in the cockpit. A couple things I don't think that I covered. Uh, typically, negatives, I'll use black or yellow. Positives can be whatever color. On this boat, we did all red. And as you can see, all the negatives are black. There's two negative leads coming in that are yellow, and then all the positives are red. I've got this cover, and as you can see, I printed out decals, labeling each individual fuse, so my customer knows what is what. Going to get this installed, and uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't mention it, but I, I purposely left this piece of the back decking off so I could get in here and wire. I'm about to put it back on, and we're going to do the C deck on the inside, get this panel back in, and I'm going to show you the finished product. Here she is she is a beauty it's been a little bit over a week since we shot that last clip where i had that corner piece of decking removed doing all the final wiring into that fuse box negative bus bar and got all the electronics in quick note guys this boat is going to be heading from here to sonar pros my customers good friends with those guys at sonar pros they're going to be installing the trolling motor Obviously, the foot pedal, a couple graphs, batteries, wiring harness, uh, whatever else he wants as far as that electronics package is concerned. But I was uh, tasked with installing the main electronics that we did on this boat. And uh, that's what we're about to walk through is check out the final product on this rig. Again, I've just got my test battery back here, this personal battery just for mock-up. First thing we're going to do is hit the old power switch. And that now has power running to that fuse box that's behind that panel. Go ahead and test this, see what our voltage is. 13 volts. We're ready to try out some of the electronics. Now I do have a label printer and I print out labels for my switches, make them look a little nicer. And that way my customer knows what is what. So we're gonna start right here with the bilge. And again, how I wired these guys is for it to light up whenever you turn the switch on. Next up is the old nav light power. And as you can see, I mounted this in the rear deck. This is a telescopic rear pole light, so it could actually go higher. And then it just pulls out and you could put it in one of the hatches. Then up front, that switch also powers the Shark Eye red green nav lights on the side of the boat. Next up is one of the sexier things on the boat, the deck lights. And buddy, these things are bright. These are those flashlight LEDs, 100% waterproof. These things are on a whole nother level, as you can see. I can't recommend them enough. If you could splurge and you got money in your budget to spend top dollar on a product, that's what I recommend getting. These things are super bright. You will not be disappointed. Next up, let's do cockpit lights. And as you can see, we just did those two. Two spotlights, and uh, you know, it's not super dark in the old tent out here, but at night, those light up this cockpit very, very well. Moving on to the rod locker lights, and I'm super proud of the rod lockers on this boat, guys. Did a video on how I built these rod lockers from start to finish, and they came out phenomenal. And you can see the lights hidden up underneath little carbon fiber action going on on this side we got the same dealio as you can see just hidden up under the track and uh they're pretty bright man those turned out real nice next up the old live well and cooler lights ran those on their own switch there's that big boy cooler Guys, this thing lit up reminds me of something in your local grocery store in the freezer department. I mean, it is just super bright, reflecting off that beautiful custom 
aluminum cooler tub available on tinyboatnation.net they custom made this they could custom make anything you want and then probably too much information guys that this thing's like a yeti i did pour foam all the way around the perimeter of this thing to make sure that all his drinks are nice and cold then in the live well we did the old waterproof spotlight and that turned out well so he's got light in his live well and lights in his cooler and last but not least we got the hatch lights now what I did was I did the rod lockers on a switch, I did the cooler and live well on a switch, and then I put all the other hatches on a switch, which are those three up front, and then this one in the back. As you can see, this guy lit up, plenty of light in the back of that hatch. Moving up front, this is the tackle storage hatch can hold 15 Plano 3700 tackle trays in here and as you can see there's that light plenty of light in there this is just a small hatch and then you've got this one up front with the recessed tray for the foot pedal on the trolling motor a lot going on in here with the drain So he is all lit up guys and then the only other thing which i didn't really cover in this video is for the live well it has its own switch and live well timer that comes from the folks at flow right so this is the power on and off switch or you could run timer mode on as you can hear kicks that pump on and then if you put it down on the timer mode you could use this to do your variable timer a lot of different settings from the folks at Flowrite. And then to reiterate on this voltmeter, there's two USB ports, so he has the capability to charge GoPros or his phone or whatever he wants to do. And we are in that back hatch, literally sitting in it. Let me show you up underneath how that fuse box ended up turning out. It's easy to get to, but it's also hidden in a nice area right adjacent to that switch panel. That's going to be it, guys. If you could, kindly subscribe to the channel as I am on my road to 50K. I'd love for you guys to hop on board the Brigade Train and join me as I continue to grow this channel. Another way you could support what I'm doing here at Brigade Boats and on this channel is to use my affiliate links. They're down below in the video description. The code is BRIGADE, and you could use the code BRIGADE at SixCentsFishing.com. Get 10% off your order, TinyBoatNation.net. Get 5% off your order, or Waterland Fishing Optics. 15% off your order. We'll catch you on the next video, guys. Thanks for joining me.